What's up, guys? My name is Marcos Garcia. Today, we have a very, 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 very special guest, Eric Konevsky. Uh, you're on What's Conversations up? with One Percenters. Appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to diving deep <laughs> on literally everything that you do. Hell yeah. Appreciate you having me. Yeah. So, Eric, you just hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, bro. About damn time, right? I've been on yes. YouTube longer than I haven't been on YouTube in my lifetime now. So it's about damn time for sure. What what's what's that like? Because like I feel like that's a lot of people's goal. Like they start YouTube and they're like their main goal is like I want to hit one million subscribers. Um well like it I felt like it was kind of inevitable. Obviously, you know, I was never pushed by the algorithm or anything like that, you know. Um but the type of content that I do a guy my size doing the savage pranks that I do that nobody else does. Like it was only a matter of time. That's the way I look at it. Obviously it was a little slower than a lot of other people, but like it was inevitable. Yeah, no. So um, that's the thing about YouTube is I think it is a slower route. Is that correct? Like YouTube is a lot slower than like all the other platforms. Depends on some people just get really lucky and get pushed. Like for example, Sam Sulik in the fitness industry. Um, nothing against him. I have no problem with him. But if you look at the views he's getting compared to every other fitness influencer, it's like, what the fuck? And then in pranks, people like Jadeon, Loaf, you know, kind of come out of nowhere and just blow up. There's no really explanation for it other than, you know, luck. But I've got no problem with that. I've, uh, you know, you can sit there and cry about it or you can just accept that you're going to have to work 10 times harder to get the same result. And I'm fine with that. And I'm curious, how hard did you have to work? Like how hard, like uh, make it like a reality because some people start YouTube. I'm one of them. I started a YouTube channel back in 2018 and my whole goal was like, I want to get rich. I want to make a lot of money okay. and I want to get a lot of views. I want to be the like super popular and famous. So right. like break, like break down the actual realities that someone who wants to actually grow and build a following and, and maybe even make money from YouTube. Like what? journey can they expect you're not going to be making any money for a long time unless you're one of those few people that get really lucky and if anything you're going to be spending a lot of money i mean you have to put a lot of money into it obviously getting equipment if you're doing like the prank genre you need to hire a cameraman um there's all these things all these different props traveling etc so you have to really love it because if you don't then you're just going to burn out because you are going to be doing it you're not only going to be not making any money, you're going to be losing money for a long time uh, before it really takes off. But you need to go through that. You know, um, it's not going to take off right away. For most people, like your first video is going to suck. And uh, you got to put those reps in, you know, and get better at it over time. That's the only way to really improve. So I felt, yeah, uh, it makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I follow a uh, very, I would say he's pretty successful. But he, he, I don't know if you've probably ever heard of him. His name's Dan Henry. Have you ever heard of a guy named Dan Henry? I have not. He's, he's pretty successful, but he, he's trying to start a YouTube channel. And although he's making a lot of money, he's not getting a lot of views. Um, any tips you would give to him? Like uh, someone like him who's like successful, like money wise, but they're not successful YouTube wise. And they're trying to really actually build something up. Well, I assume he didn't make his money overnight, right? So... Uh, I would apply that same, um, the same principles that made him his money into building the channel. You know, it's gonna, you gotta get those reps in and you're just gonna get better over time. Obviously collaborations and stuff. That's one thing I've been terrible with collaborations because I can't stand a lot of other YouTubers, but, um, that, that definitely helps for sure. Just, um, collabing with other people, getting as many eyeballs on you as possible. So collaborating with someone who has a bit bigger following possibly. Yeah. Okay. But, I, but again, for uh, other people with a bigger following to even want to collab with you, you know, you, you got to put in the work first and make some videos on your own. Obviously, if you're just starting out and you're not anybody, then why would anybody want to collab with you? You know, that's true. I've all, like you said, you've been you're not good at collaborations. Me neither. I always want to just prank <laughs> people that I was supposed to collaborate with or or something like that. So, um, oh, my God. Yeah, I've uh, <laughs> I've like pranked. Uh, I mean. In the fitness industry with all the expos and shit, that's what gets the most views for me. I've probably burned so many bridges by pranking them. But, like, I don't give a fuck because, like, half of them are, like, 
I'm, I'm probably more well known in that scene now doing the pranks than I ever was when I was just like cool with everybody and doing the same fitness content as everybody else. Do you find it harder to be able to make pranks and videos? The fact that the more known you get. No, I think that's bullshit. There's always going to be people who don't know. And I think okay. the more well known you get, there's actually more opportunities. So like the Nelk boys, for example, they're like, oh, boys, we're getting too big to do pranks. Like, yep. what the fuck? When you're when you're that level, when you have connections with Dana White and all these people, you can do like set up. I'm not talking about fake, but like set up fake employee pranks where the business actually lets you do it. You have so many more opportunities to do pranks that like people without those connections, without that budget aren't able to do. So I think uh, if anything, the bigger you get, it just opens up more opportunities to do more insane shit. Mm, okay. That, that's interesting. Uh, before there's we get always in... going to be people who don't know who you are. And even if you saw um, like the Arnold classic this year, I went completely in disguise and like nobody even recognized me. Like there's always shit you can do. So you could disguise yourself basically. Like there's, you're, there's, unli there's limit, there's no limits. Yeah. I mean the, um, the people that say they're too big to do pranks, they just, I don't think they were ever really into it to begin with. If you, uh, besides like Ross creations, none of the OG pranksters have really like stuck around and like the daily dropout and those people, but most people just, they use pranks as like a crutch, a stepping mm. stone just to get their name out there, but they never really liked doing pranks to begin with. I love the shit, you know, I'll never stop yep. as long as I can keep doing it. So I'm curious. So the YouTube was a journey for you. Uh, when they started making like shorts and stuff like that, like your reels, YouTube reels, TikToks and stuff like that. Was that a catalyst for you to reaching 1 million subscribers? Like, um, Absolutely. I was. The reason why, yeah, yeah. The reason why I ask is because, like, if someone has a, a chance for making long form content, like YouTube, like, say, for instance, like a podcast, or they have a chance to make shorts, which one would you advise them? What, like, if they only could choose one, like, if you only, like, they're like, okay, I want to do one or the other, which one would you advise them to do? I would say the long form because you don't connect okay. with people on shorts the same way as long form. Even if you mm -hmm. have less subscribers, they're going to be more loyal subscribers. You know, they, uh, you know what I mean? But um, I, what I would do really is I would do the podcast and then clip it up into a bunch of shorts. Um, it, it would be kind of a waste not to, you know, okay, the way things are nowadays, because uh, you can get a lot more eyeballs on you through shorts for sure. And I was stuck in the hundred ish K range of subs. And the first month that my shorts started taking off, I got to, I gained like 400 K subs within a month. So I oh, got shit. up to 500 K and then yeah, within the next year now I'm at a million. So the shorts definitely helped a lot, but I do have to point out that uh, when people subscribe to your shorts, they don't always get recommended your long form content. That's why some people like to have a shorts channel and a long form channel. So there's always retards who are like, Oh, what did you buy your followers when they see a video doesn't get that many views? And it's like, no, they came from shorts. Like I have shorts that have a hundred million views. Like, yeah. Bottom subscribers. What do you mean? <laughs> Cause I see that the Chew Poppy guy, the Chew Poppy Munyano, he goes around saying Chew Poppy Munyano. He's like, Chew Poppy mm -hmm. He has like six, like 8 million TikToks followers. And he's getting millions of views on his TikTok, but when it comes to his long form YouTube channel, he's getting like eight thousand views per video. Yeah, if you if you like only do short form content, that it usually looks like that. Yeah, um, I was already I my all my shorts are already from they're just clipped from long form content. So, and I was already getting like fifty k ish views on my long form. So. It's not like I just started from scratch, started doing shorts. Like when people only do shorts, yeah, usually their long form looks pretty abysmal, their views. So for you, you do pranks though, right? So you're in the prank. Uh, you kind of, I feel like you have content that is engaging, right? Like your content's mm -hmm. like engaging. People want to watch it. But for the business owners who have like, they're, they're trying to sell their product. Most business owners, all they, when they make content, all they're trying to do is sell their product. They're not engaged. They're, I hate to say it, but most of the time they're not mm -hmm. engaging. They're just like, oh, here's my offer for today, boom, boom, boom. Or like, here's how you can do this. How can a business owner really stand out in the marketplace, do you believe? 
a business owner that's trying that's to. So teach we're talking you? about like let's just say like uh, you're familiar with Brandon Carter, right? Oh yeah, I love Brandon yeah. Carter. So he he he's found a way to stand out. Um, but that, that's because he's teaching other people. Um, okay, what he knows. Same with like Alex Hormozzi. Yep. Fresh and fit. Uh, if you do, you ever watch their shit? I do. Yep. Yeah. Um, even like Wes Watson. Um, he's a bit aggressive, but he says a lot of good shit. I mean, people like that who are teaching other people their business stuff. Um, you know, that's engaging. Obviously, if you're just trying to promote whatever product and that's it, that's not going to be, you know, who, who really wants to watch that. Very true. So like, what did, what did, like, what can you give like some, uh, like an, like a strategy? This, this, let's just say you were going to start a um let's just say not boxing because that's kind of entertaining well, let's just say you were going to start like a a mindset uh business like you're going to start teaching people mindset how would you use your youtube channel to promote your business but in a way to where it's also engaging well i feel like people would well there would be some people at least who would care because they've already seen my pranks they okay. see the reactions I get. They see that I'm this big guy who, uh, you know, people react completely differently to him uh, than the smaller pranksters. He's not nervous to do these pranks. So I feel like people would care because they already kind of have a connection with me. Somebody just starting from scratch, like if I was a nobody, I don't know, to be honest. I don't really know how to answer that. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm really trying to get like a way that people can like be more engaging because like a lot of these people want to start YouTube channels. And their biggest thing is like they don't get views on these things and then they end up giving up. You know what I mean? And we know that yeah. that could be the case in pranks and any kind of YouTube content you do. You don't get views and it can really affect you. And you're like, man, like, am I doing the right thing? I mean, I would not even expect to get any views for like the first 50 videos, let's say. Dang. Okay. So 50 videos minimum. Yeah. yeah you just got to get the reps in, man. Just like anything okay. else. Like if you start going to the gym, you're not going to get huge in a week, right? Yep. So it's the same thing applies. If you're building up a business, you you know, you're not going to become rich in a week. So same thing with building your social media. Interesting. All right. So I'm ready to dive deep now. Mm -hmm. Who is Eric Konevsky and how did you get started in all this? How did I get started in all this? In YouTube? Um, mm -hmm. I actually started my first channel when I was 12. I was into doing magic back then. And this is like 2008, like YouTube was brand like nobody was on YouTube. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever that you can, I mean, post your videos for other people to see. I didn't even know that you can really make money off doing it. And then I did that for a little while. Then again, when I was 15, I got into the fitness thing. I started Konevsky Fitness. And yeah, I didn't expect to do it to make any money off it. I just... You know, wanted to share my fitness journey. Um, yeah, and then over time, I built up my fitness channel. Uh, I started doing online coaching full time, making a living off that, which we can talk about in a bit. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna I'm we're gonna get into that. that. I do want to get into that. Yeah, but um, over time, I got really bored making fitness content because I realized. <clears throat> I realized like one day I was just editing my video and I literally fell asleep on the chair while editing. Like I, I was bored of it. I was sick of it. Mm. Cause how many times can you show the same bicep workout, the same chicken and rice day of eating? It, it's monotonous. It's the same shit over and over. And I just thought like, man, like I'm, I'm too talented to just eat and shit and work out and spend my whole life doing that. So I really wanted to get into the pranks, and at that point, I just went all in into it too. And it it made for a lot more, much more exciting life, much more exciting stories as well. Because before then, I just thought to myself, like, "Gosh, I'm boring. Like, what can I even talk to people about? How to get bigger biceps? Like, how 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 long can you talk about that? Whereas all the pranks, the journey that's been, that's given me a lot of you know interesting stories to tell for sure." No, lots of lots of in interesting stories, and I've and yeah, I've worked you, I've worked with you on one of your pranks, and uh, I filmed, and I'm li I'm literally sitting in the in the truck, <laughs> like creep down, and you're you and two Russian dudes are like 
at the gas pump saying uh just literally staring at people and i'm like if that was <laughs> in that car i'd be like what the fuck like i'm i'm about to die so like it's the, I, yeah. I even have a story like like a part of your story does that make sense yeah and uh the f- funny note about that that was uh staring at people then paying for their gas part one and nowadays uh people always comment the funniest comment i see is oh don't try this in texas yes where did we film that Texas, right here in Austin, Texas, right down the road <laughs> exactly. from where I live. Yes, right Every down the road from where, I, where I live. And no, like in my head, this is what's going through my head while you're while you're filming that prank. I'm like, yo, someone's probably gonna pull a gun out. Like, I'm dead serious. I was like, I was like, I'm safe, but like these two guys are like, right. Like, I'm talking mm-hmm. about like just staring. Like, give us like the stare. You're just like staring at them. Like, yeah. I'm like, go, like just imagine that. Two Russian guys, bats. Not only that, you had bats in your hand too, and like a briefcase. Shit, I think you had a bat. bat. <laughs> I think you had, you had a bat. Yes. Yeah, but um, shit, I lost my train of thought. I was gonna say something. Oh, you good? Um, yeah, but what I wanted to also transition into. Well, we don't have to transition into yet, but doing the pranks, I definitely feel like I inspired more people to get into the gym than I ever did making fitness mm. content. Because again, some boring guy, boring meathead, another boring meathead doing bicep curls and eating chicken and rice. Like, cool. I mean, maybe other people who are already into fitness want to watch that. But in my videos, people see the real life interactions with people. Like, the real life benefits to being jacked. Basically, nobody fucks with me. And, uh, nobody. Like, if I was to do that prank, I'm not going to lie. If we switched roles, <laughs> I, did the same, I did the same prank as you, I probably would have been getting swung at. Like, legit. Yeah, just like every other prankster. Like, I don't have to be worried about a gun because they're just going to look at <laughs> me and be like, okay, I'm going to knock this dude out. Yeah, what's so funny is when I started doing pranks at first, I every other prankster I ever saw is small. So I thought a banger reaction is people like attacking you and shit. And I was frustrated at first. Like, why isn't anybody attacking me? Why isn't (laughs) like, why am I not getting the same reactions? Then it kind of clicked for me. Like, Oh, cause I'm big. And I, so I'm just going to like play into that. I'm going to be the big guy that does pranks and have my own style. Yeah. No, I like your style. Like the scary Russian mafia type type guy. Um, Another one, another one I remember is you uh, don't look at my, like, why are you looking at my girlfriend prank? Uh-huh. And I think that one got like 2 million views, right? Somewhere around there. Yeah. And it's like, you got this hot girl bending over doing exercises. And then you're just <laughs> like, Hey, you're looking at my girlfriend. <laughs> and then you would see them. Like, like you said, they're like, Oh shit. And they're like, uh, no, no, that wasn't me. But yeah, if you were I, to take I, a guy like me to say that, like, yo, why are you looking <laughs> at my girlfriend? They're like, Oh, I'll do whatever I want. Motherfucker. Like, so yeah. size does matter is what I'm saying. Like you need to like, Get sized up, like a hundred percent. Speaking of size, I saw your transformation. I still don't believe it. I really don't. <laughs> you were skinnier than me. Is that true? Yeah, I was one hundred thirty pounds when I started. I don't, Maybe you can I, pop a picture up or something. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture up, but like, I, I yeah. like still trying to believe. Like it's mind blowing that like the size you are now that you were the size of me because I couldn't like. In my head, trying to picture my me your size, I'm like, I can't picture that. I'm like, I, I, yeah, I'm right thinking. Now, of... Go ahead. I'm 260 right now, so I'm literally double that. I'm like two of those people. And <laughs> my biggest was 320, so that's like, what, two and a half? <laughs> so when you started working out, you're my size. What's going through your head? Like, what's going through your head to, to get to that next size? I just want to get huge. When I started, uh, well, well Back to my childhood. I grew up watching WWE. Okay. I looked up to the wrestlers, especially the jacked ones. And in my head, that's what a man should look like. I always knew I'm going to be jacked. Mm. Like I would look at like teachers and regular NPCs, and I would <laughs> I would be like eight, ten years old, and just thinking like, look at this loser. Like why? Like why does this NPC want to look like this? Like I, I was like ten, thinking these thoughts. So I always knew I'm I'm going to be jacked, and then. I just didn't really know how. As soon as I found out you have to hit the gym and lift weights, I'm like, okay. And um, yeah, I was all in, bro. Like, I was training for four hours a day when I was 16. I was, my diet was on point. Even naturally at 16, before I started gear, I I was already bigger than a lot of people. Like, 
once I once I was all in, you know, I was all in. And uh, hmm, that's no, that's interesting. So you started training at like you started getting your size at sixteen. Well, I started training at fifteen, I guess. Okay, okay. By the time I was sixteen, I've made some decent progress. Dang. Okay. So let's. Uh, you you talked about going back to starting something you 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 were doing in the past, which is your 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 training program. Can mm-hmm. you explain what that is? Uh yeah. So, uh, just how the whole program works. Yeah, just like what um, it is, who it's for, and like like. Like just what what like is included in it? Like what are people like can expect? It's for anybody who wants to make a physique transformation, like I did. So if you're looking to gain muscle, I've obviously done that. If you're looking to lose fat, I mean, I lost close to 100 pounds at one point, so I've done that as well. If you need cycle advice, I've done like every cycle you can imagine. Again, I'm your guy, and I've also been doing online coaching longer than. Most people, I mean, the first time I did online coaching was back in 2014, actually, when I was still in high school. So I've been doing online coaching way before it was a trendy thing to do, way before every asshole who stepped foot into the gym decided they want to be an online coach. And as a matter of fact, you know what was, I wanted to get back into it for a while, but you know what was my final breaking point where I'm decided, okay, that's it, I'm doing it. I'm thinking, let me guess, Sam Sulek. No. No? Okay. What was it? The Nelk Boys. Really? They started promoting online coaching, and I'm like, these fucking F-words were on YouTube, I'm not going to say it, are promoting... promoting coach. Online- They're promoting coaching. Yeah. Like, and, and for the longest time, I just didn't want to confuse my audience, like be this yeah. funny prank guy, and at the same time, be the serious coach. But then I'm like, fuck, if these assholes are doing it, you know... And I'm in the physical shape I'm in. Like it's wrong not to do it at that point. So, so there. Hold up. Really... Before we tr- go further, you're you're telling me the Nelk Boys <laughs> are promoting fitness coaching. Yeah, Kyle was promoting it on his stories for like a week straight. That's I think crazy. they just took like twenty. It's like going to the gym. Like I had this experience before. I went to the gym. I'm working out. I'm at the YMCA. <laughs> And like, no offense, but like this bigger guy who's like clearly out of shape comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, I see you working out over here. Um, I'm a coach. And if you <laughs> need any help, just let me know. And I got you. And I'm, I'm going to charge you like so and so money. But like, I'm just it, it wasn't even about the money. But I was like, this dude's clearly out of shape. And he's coming to me telling me he's a coach. Yeah, it's like a hobo telling you they're going to blow your business up. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, so back to the program. So everybody gets, I completely revamped the whole thing, by the way, because back in the day, I would just basically email people their custom diet, custom training, custom cycle, if that's their thing. And theoretically, that should be enough because I'm telling everybody exactly what they need to do to get the results. But, you know, not everybody has the discipline to really stick to it. Uh, at that point. So the way it is now, it's super hands-on. I'm on everybody's ass 24-7. So we're doing two Zoom calls a week with all my clients. Literally right after this, I have a Zoom call coming up with my clients. And um, weekly check-ins, I'm sending them a video back telling them what exactly needs to change, if any changes need to be made. We're all in a group chat together with all the clients in a Telegram group. So it's super hands-on. And I'm super available to everybody 24 hours of the day answering any questions anybody has so with the way it is now if you join my coaching and you like there's no way you're not going to reach your goals unless you just straight up ignore everything like an asshole yep and not only that they literally have eric konevsky he's got 1 million subscribers on youtube (laughs) he he's got the results like you have like a great asset at your literally at your fingertips by joining a hundred percent. Like even if like, say for instance, they like they're doing the workouts and stuff, they're going to get other benefits just by being in your like network and inner circle and being able to physically talk to you. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to get the motivation, the drive. Like you, like I said, like we haven't even really dived deep into like some of the struggles you've even like personally been through, like, like growing this YouTube channel that takes data, literally dedication. I don't think people Mm -hmm. realize how much dedication it takes to go from, 
zero to one million. And you've you've been doing this since like you already said, like with, with some with some well documented bumps in the road along the way. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like it wasn't like you did this in like the first like in one year. You didn't do this in one year. Like you've oh. you've had like tons of dedication toward this. And I know because I know I've, two years ago you weren't at a million subscribers. I think you were at like two two hundred thousand, two to three hundred thousand. No, when, when we were filming together, I did not even have a hundred k, bro. I you, don't. You, think. you had a, at least a hundred k. It was nowhere near a million. Did I? Yeah, when we filmed together, and you, like I guess I you might have. Yeah, oh, I might, just hit like a hundred k. Okay, maybe it was like one hundred thirty thousand, but it was nowhere near a million. Mm-hmm. And we had a conversation, and we were talking, and we're like, "Yo, on the like, like YouTube's favoring people and things like that." But like, like it's not easy, easy. You know what I mean? Like this stuff takes actual dedication. Nothing worth having is easy. Exactly. Uh, it's just I, uh, I just have that whatever it takes mentality that I learned from Rich Piana early on that I adopt to everything I do in life. Um, so like back when I was, um, all into fitness at one point I was eating 12 meals a day. Um, yeah, I was eating 12 meals a day, four hours a day at the gym, doing some crazy cycles, which nobody would ever even want to do. But, um, yeah, I, I just applied that same shit with the pranks, just all in. Now I'm applying the same thing with my online coaching. Like I'm going to. Do whatever it takes to get my clients the results, you know. Uh, where, go, like, where, yeah, I'm I'm big on like mindset and stuff like that. So where did you said you got that mind the all in mentality from who? Rich Piano. Okay, was he like a mentor? Would, um, he was a bodybuilder who I looked up to. He passed away in 2017. I was, uh, I mean, I, the, the all the fitness people that follow me know this. Like he was, uh, I was with him like three days before his death. And just being around him, like, really motivated me. But actually, the 12 meals a day, that was his program. And that's how I got his attention, by doing it. Because even he quit before he got to 12 meals a day. And that's his own program. I'm literally the only person who was crazy enough to actually fucking do it and document the whole thing. Mm, interesting. Okay, no, that's, that's interesting. Do you recommend people who are in your program to document what they're doing? Absolutely. Okay. Why not? I mean, they might, at the might... very least. At the very least, everybody's inside my app and they upload their progress photos every week, which okay. they're definitely not going to regret doing. Some people are insecure to do it at first, but I tell them all, like, they're going to thank themselves a year from now and, you know, when they look amazing to compare the before and after. But yeah, I recommend everybody documents it. Why not? Got it. Okay. No, yeah. So like I said, if you're into fitness and you're ready to get to that next level, I definitely recommend Eric. I mean, like, as you can see, I mean, his size... <laughs> recommends himself for you like he's not yeah. joking around and you kept that you've kept your size for years like yeah even with oh, what yeah. you got going on like you're doing youtube i'm pretty sure you're busy busy man because a lot of people will be like oh i don't have time i got school i got <laughs> about that but like you do youtube you're probably traveling you're probably doing all these other things and you still have the time to to that's stay a good point the last uh five years since i've been doing pranks i've maintained this exact physique and um, that's not easy to do with the schedule I have. So that's, that's another thing, I guess, that's uh, another box checked that I've accomplished in my fitness journey. So during your journey, uh, I want to I kind of dive back. During your journey, like, what were some of those struggles that you had to go through like, to get to where you are now? struggles just any kind of struggle oh, maybe oh, maybe oh, step oh, back yeah yeah so when it comes to pranks especially my style of savage pranks because nowadays most of these loaf walmart assholes they have their guy openly film everything which is bullshit that's not a prank when people can see that the camera is right there that's not a prank that's i don't know what that is that's a vlog but um yeah so my style of pranks my biggest issue especially when I had no money to really pay anybody is finding a good camera guy Mm. because even if somebody checks off one box, there's nobody who checked off all the boxes. So number one, you got to have balls. You can't be afraid of getting arrested at the same time. You actually got to know how to film. Like you got to know how to hide and like still get a steady shot. Um, When you get it, a lot of people would get attacked smaller guys. Now that I'm not going to lie. When I was doing yours, I was like, 
I was like, fuck, like, I was just like nervous as fuck. I might, I was like, he's going to fucking hate me because this video is probably going to come out like shaky as hell. My hand was like, I couldn't stop it. Why you, you were nervous? Like, why I was a little nervous. I was a little nervous. That's what I'm saying. Like for y'all. Yeah, cause <laughs> one of the, uh, one of my most recent people at this point, I would just give it up pretty much on finding a camera guy. Although I will need one soon. So I didn't, I guess I haven't given up, but one of the guys recently who wanted to be a camera guy, the shot is literally just like <laughs> terrible. So I take him to my house. I put it on the screen. I'm like, you're a fan, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, would you want to watch this video? <laughs> He's like, okay, I get what you mean. I'm like, yeah. So wh why would you film it like that if you wouldn't even want to watch this? So yeah, the person has to know how to film. They have to have balls. They have to, I mean, if they, uh, I'm all about getting shit done, no matter how I feel. But if somebody's just ruining the mood, being a dickhead, I'm not going to be as funny when the, just the, when the energy's off like that. So I can be around people like that when I'm filming. And then what else is there? Um, yeah, there's just, and then everybody has their own schedules. It's just the, finding a good camera guy has been such a shit show. And um, I'm not even trying to find an editor. Well, at this point I am, but up until now, I didn't even, because, um, yeah, I never thought, I still don't think that anybody can edit my own videos as good as I do, but. They don't have your ideas in their head. That's why I, I feel you on that. You're right. Like the way you want and your ideas, the way you expect this to come out, it's hard to tell someone how to like your idea. I, I, I can feel you on that. Cause even when I was doing mine, I didn't want no one to edit it. Cause I was like, they're not going to do it as how I want it. They don't have my ideas in, in my head. Yeah. You, I mean, I had Tanner edit one of my videos recently and he's probably the closest person who can get it right because he does the same pranks, the same style of pranks. I mean, we work together. Right. But still I had there a bunch of times I was like, Oh, can you correct this? Can you correct that? I mean, that's inevitable. But yeah, now I'm definitely looking for an editor. The only thing is it's going to have to be somebody local who can actually come with us and watch us when we film because I want the editor the editor to already have an idea in their head of what the video is going to look like, which parts are funny, which parts are cut out. I don't want them to just dump a bunch of gigabytes of raw footage on them and they don't even know what's going on. They don't know the story and like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, we can connect on that. Uh, not for me, but I might have you a really good editor. Uh, we'll talk after. Is he in Cali? Uh, no, but he knows a lot of people. Like he's a well, oh, no. he's like he's well connected. He's uh, he's filmed with some of like people like Nerd. I don't know if you know Nerdballer TV. He's filmed with. Oh uh, yeah, I know Nerdballer. Yeah, he's filming Nerdballer TV, but he's he's Weagle? well connected. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> one of the people. <laughs> Kegel <Kingle> Weagle. <laughs> That's not Kegel Weagle the Eagle. No, this guy's. Uh, he's actually. Uh, never been in i don't think he's ever been in, in any of the videos but he's always the behind the scenes guy he's filmed like joseph costello nerdballer tv i think he's even filmed with like uh who was it there's another guy he filmed with but he's he's a pretty good and i feel like i can get, at least give you his contact or uh connect y'all sure. yeah yeah if he knows anybody out of here in cali who's actually like yeah that's what i'm saying he he knows yeah. multiple filmers he's uh did he film um uh, He's, I think he said he filmed with Jitty on at one point, but not for long. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but he knows people in the, in the space. So I'm pretty sure he might know someone in Cali. All right. For but sure. Yeah. So, um, so the struggles are the filming and I can feel, uh, finding a filmer. We were talking about your struggles and some of the things that are like tough. Uh, I don't think people realize what it really takes to make a video. Can you like get like explain that like what it actually takes to film like the perfect not, not even necessarily perfect but like actually film one of these videos so you got to come up with the idea then you gotta wait you gotta tell whichever asshole you're working with that you need to film and then he's gonna tell you oh i'm only available thursday at this time so you gotta do it on the asshole schedule now <laughs> assuming like I'm, I'm telling you like with the shit i've actually gone through yeah, yeah, yeah then um i mean assuming everything is perfect the like he's actually filming good the mic doesn't die the battery on the camera doesn't die mic's connected because that's happened before the mic <laughs> yeah. you, you film the home video and then you don't even have synced audio yeah. and it's like fuck 
assuming everything is perfect, uh, shit can always still go wrong. I mean, the, the scenes might just not be funny. The people might just be like, ha ha, they're very funny. What's your TikTok? And a lot of these dipshits like Loaf and the Walmart people, again, they put those reactions and then everybody in the comments is like, oh, that's so wholesome. <laughs> those people had a sense of humor. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm trying to get actual reactions. So getting real reactions like that takes a long time. And again, that's assuming everything goes right because there's always going to be technical difficulties. Um, and, and yeah, should just uh, pranks. I, at this point, it's one of the ha- hardest genres, I think, to film. Because if you think about it, people that do reaction type content and shit, they can upload every day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the, the industry's changed, and you see like the people like I show speed. I think even uh, multiple people are moving to the sh- the streaming, like streaming online. Which I even thought about streaming my podcast. I was like, uh, <laughs> is that the way to build an audience nowadays? You stream, you stream everything. Uh, yeah. So. No, but my that, thing is, I like I said, I genuinely fucking love the pranks. I I don't I would not feel as good after producing a reaction video as I would after filming a banger prank. So, you know, I truly love this shit. I'm one of the few probably people who actually do. Like I said, Ross Creations, like you could tell after like 10 years, he's still doing it and he's still coming up with like innovative ideas. And obviously Tanner works with him. I've heard a little bit about how he is. Like he he's really he really loves the shit, and I'm the same way. Interesting. Okay, <clears throat> I have a question. Boom, boom. Oh, what advice do you have for future pranksters? Like you said, this is a hard industry to get into, like a hard niche type um, thing to get into. Mainly because nowadays people aren't actually really doing the pranks. They're just like they're holding the camera or their PlayStation yeah. is what they call it. I got my PS Five. So advice if you want uh, to blow up as fast as possible? No, not necessarily blow up. Just say someone, they're like, yo, I want to be like, I want to be, I want to be like Eric Konevsky. I want to do pranks and stuff like that. Like what advice would you, would you give that person? Oh man. Um, shit. Well, pranks are a hard genre to get into nowadays. I was going to give you the sarcastic answer of if somebody <laughs> wants to get as many views as possible. You have to have the broccoli haircut. You have to dress like a bum, show how humble you are, film everything openly. And it's this is mandatory. You have to make videos crying about your depression, about your how hard your life is. Like that that is key to get pushed by the algorithm and to grow your following. I feel As like I saw re- I feel like I saw a recent person do that. Canel Joseph just did that. He went Canel on- Joseph, Loaf, Judeon. Yeah. I mean, that's just part of so I don't understand. This. Break this down for me, because like back when I was pranking people and I did my pranking channel, I pranked Gideon, and I think I told you about that. Yeah, I still don't understand like the like the reaction that I got from him because he freaking blew up, like Whoa. blew up. And I'm, I'm trying fair, to feel like how how a prankster like who pranks people gives that kind of reaction after being pranked. I don't understand it. To be fair, he did come to his house. Yeah, like that's kind of pushing yeah, yeah. it, but like, I mean, depending on what mood I'm in, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, people are saying they're gonna come kill me, so I might come out with a gun if that's me. But damn, okay. you know what I mean? Um, I mean, if I'm in a good mood, I might not care. But again, th- that's really pushing it. But it is okay, funny okay. as fuck. Dion, fuck you, Dion. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was pushing it, and I think that was probably like one of the weirdest pranks I did. But I, I. I Speaking of weird pranks, so like that was, I was doing at that time, which you will find people do. It's actually good that we're actually going to bring this topic up right now, which is, um, I don't know if you would call it clickbait. It's not clickbait, but it's like, um, what kind of, what kind of content style would you say that is where I'm like showing up to Gideon? Uh, oh fuck. It's like that one thing, um, where you're trying to do that one thing for like massive amounts of views. Uh, there's a term for it. Cloud chasing. Clout chasing. Yeah. What would you say for people clout chasing? I mean, would you recommend it, everybody... it? I mean, showing up to people's houses, probably not. But what does clout chasing really mean? Isn't everybody clout chasing? I mean, aren't doesn't everybody want to get as many views as possible? Yeah. Isn't that the goal? That is the goal. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, there's certain boundaries. But 
everybody wants to get as many views as possible at the end of the day. So I don't see a problem with any with people, you know, pushing the boundaries to try to get as many views as they want. Again, as long as they're not like, do you know who Trey Sellers is? I don't think I heard of him, but I will, uh, I will look him up after this. Oh man. I actually met him in person before he did a lot of it. So he's like, and this is why he gets no views too, because he he like pretended to jerk off in front of women in Starbucks, and then uh, he told this other woman he's gonna push her off a cliff. She's like sitting on the edge of a cliff. He's like, "I'm about to kill oh, you shit. right now." Like, at that point, that's not pranks anymore. That's Damn. like I don't know what that is. But yeah, I mean, the shit I do, I really don't think. I mean, obviously, it's um, again, it's pushing the boundaries, but I don't think it's overstepping the boundaries. I think it's right. Um. How do you say it? Like right at the edge. Okay, so like, hmm, I'm trying to think. So, don't do the stuff that's gonna get you killed. Basically, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think I've ever done anything that I wouldn't want done to me. You know, any any okay. any of the things in my pranks, if somebody enough, did to me, I, I I would. Uh, I, I might get pissed, but then when I knew it's a prank, like I would laugh about it. You know what I mean? That makes sense. So uh, a lot of people don't know, but or there some do, some don't. But you have how many personalities do you have in your actual YouTube uh, channel? Gosh, at this point. And can you give us a teaser of those? Twelve. Can you give us a teaser of the personalities? We have Vladimir, the Russian gangster. Son, we got Jason Blaha. I don't like the way you're smiling at me. I'm going to have to get my air thing. Got the goddamn good American Chester Mitchell. 20 years the goddamn Navy. I got the creep. I'm just filming a video. Oh, my God, Stephanie. Like, I'm so offended right now. Oh, my God. Got the Liberty King. Steroids are king. Got fucking John from Jersey, you piece of shit. This is getting her cringy. <laughs> no, this is I can't this remember is what else I got. This is great. Renato from Brazil. No English. I'm sorry. Uh, who else do I got? Who else do I got? CC unit, do you know how creepy that is? Uh, and uh, hypothetically, we have Sam Sulik, who is an interesting character, but, you know. Yeah, and then I got to remember what my others are. I have too many. To no, no, you're good. You're good. Um, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. And you, can I ask you a question and you answer it as the Russian mafia guy? I love that one. I, I hate to say it. I love the, Rus the Russian mafia guy one. Uh, I mean, that's that's my favorite, bro. Like, walking around in public as the Russian gangster. Like, sometimes after filming, when I would, like, go out after, I wouldn't even wash the tattoos off. Because just, you get even... Think about the respect you get just being jacked. Now double that when you're dressed as the Russian gangster. So, it, it, it's just the most badass character to play. No, that one, that one, I love that one. I don't know if it's, like... Because do you speak, you speak Russian, right? Yes, that's my first language. Okay, dope. Are, you're from, uh, but you're not from Ukraine. Russia. Ukraine, yeah. You're from Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine, but up until two years ago, I would always say I'm from Russia. That's what everybody from Ukraine would say. Then two years ago, people discovered Ukraine. I mean, but Ukrainian is Russian. Same thing. Same shit. Same people. Yep, exactly. Interesting. So can we get a, a little bit more of that Russian character? What do, what do you need? What question? <laughs> The question, the question is, sure. oh, sh the question is actually, I have a question. You're supposed to ask the first question for my next guest. I don't think we said, I don't think I asked you that. The first question for your next guest? Yeah, you what get to ask the question mean? for my next guest. You get to ask the first question for my next guest. The first question for your next guest. Huh. Anything. And they're coaches and consultants. They're normally coaches and consultants. Uh, how many people has he killed? <laughs> I think it's very important to know. 
<laughs> I'm gonna ask him that. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, no, 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 no. All right. Yeah. All right, so let's get uh let's get back into into business. All right, so you're starting your your fitness journey and is is you said you had a specific app for that. Is that yes. Uh, okay. Well, it's uh the Trainerize app. Yeah, perfect. Well, I'm saying like um I don't know if you ever heard of School. I'm pretty sure you know Alex Ramosi, so you probably heard of School. Yeah, I mentioned him earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You mentioned him earlier. Uh what's your thoughts on school and like pushing your 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 group to school? I don't know. I've never checked it out. I've heard him talk about it, but I don't know the <laughs> platform. I've never seen it, so I don't know. Well, it's, uh, I I'm think sure, it's pretty I'm it's pretty dead if Alex Ramosi is the one running it. Yeah, well, he's not running it. Another guy runs it, but he's promoting it. He's he probably mm-hmm. he's bought into it. But it's good because you can use that for your like community building kind of. So it's kind of like I would I would actually describe it like a Discord, but for business. Okay. If you ever, if you ever use Discord, Discord is really confusing, bro. It is no, I've very is. Too. <laughs> it is no i hate discord but school is actually more like because on school you can put all your content like if you're shooting like if you have training content you can actually it's like a youtube it's like a mini youtube channel that like if you had like you built your own course like just say you build like a 12 day like training course you can make your each you can make each one into its own like classroom yeah well i suppose trainer is the same way okay um, like every when i send people to workouts every video has um every every exercise has a video demonstration which mm. right now i have other videos but eventually i'm gonna film myself like performing every exercise for the clients to see but trainer eyes might be better for your audience because it's actually built for fitness industry correct for fitness. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's like it's it's that niche oh interesting yeah, okay. and it, it makes it super simple everybody has their calendar every day um so they see exactly what workout to do you know uh their diet it's always in their face. The way I did before via email, again, I mean, if somebody's really about it, they should be able to stick to it. But the way it is now, it's always in your face. So, I mean, <laughs> unless you just choose to ignore it, you're not going to fail. Like, okay, it, it makes it a lot easier to follow along. Got it. So there y'all go. But they can they can join that, but they have to get with you first, right? What? They can join that, but they have to get with you first. Right. So, um, all like of my Instagram? clients, yeah, through Instagram DMS where I okay. have a type form that's kind of like a little application. Then I talk to the, to all, uh, potential clients for a bit. And if I think we're going to be a good fit, we get on a phone call. I go over everything and we go from there. And they're talking to you, right? That you're, you said, I think on your Instagram post, they're talking to you. Who else? Well, yeah. no, cause most people who do this, they, they don't talk to the actual person that they're, they're going to be working with. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people, People are paying to work with me, not with I know. my assistant. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I want to let people know, like, they're when they call, like, or they, whenever they're talking, they're talking with you because they probably think they're not talking. Everything with you. is one hundred percent me. Um, so interesting. I got a curious question. What was your favorite YouTube video to film? Oh, the professor prank. That's the easiest question ever. The professor, professor. The, yeah, the professor prank. What, uh, I don't think I've seen that one. Maybe I did remind. Don't like, tell me you haven't seen that one. That's like my most. That's the best video I've ever. Oh, like that's everybody. when you're, smoking, you're behind the the, the podium. And yeah, you're yeah. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that one. Yeah, yeah. Bro, because that was like my third prank or some shit like that. Like my when I started doing pranks full time, it might have been like my third ever prank or something. <clears throat> and I mean, everything just worked out that day. Like, what are the fucking odds <laughs> that we would find that lecture with that professor who? Happened to have his class taken away last semester. Because, mm. like, like the, the that was actually my second attempt. We walked into a different lecture hall right before this, and the professor's like, "Ha ha, very funny. Don't have time for this." He literally told me that. Uh, but then the second one, like the professor actually believed it because he had gotten his class taken away from him before. So he's like, "Oh shit, it must have happened again." And the fact that he left the class, left me alone to teach the class, and then the cops didn't storm in like. Um, I, you know, the whole time I was just expecting the cops to storm in, but no, the, the Dean came who was hilarious herself. They evacuated everybody out. And then the way we finished it off with the, uh, oh my bad. I thought I was in Arizona. It just, uh, it just worked out so perfectly. And that was my last attempt too. 
I had a root canal appointment right after, so I had to um, go do that. Mm. And um, I always knock out during my root canals, but after getting the shots, you know, uh, the numbing shit. But this time I was wide awake. I was telling my dentist about it the whole time. I was like so stoked. Like I knew I had just done like, I just made magic happen basically. The perfect prank. Yeah. No, that was interesting. I, I was think... watching you. I was watching you because you were smoking a cigarette, and I was like, "What? The... This dude's brave as hell! Like he's got a fucking cigarette." So, in. again, this was one of my first pranks, so I was nervous as fuck, bro. I couldn't tell. I had my poker face the whole time, but you couldn't tell. So I was actually on my phone, and uh, it looks like I'm just you know sitting doing some menacing shit, but I'm texting my cameraman, and who's in the back, and I'm like, "Do I smoke? Are you sure I should smoke?" He's like, "Smoke, smoke now, oh, now, shit. now." Yeah. I wish I still had that convo. It's so funny. And uh, yeah, eventually I just slide oh, even, it up. Like, and... Even you, like you still had nervous, like, cause I, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think you were nervous at all. I thought you were just went in there. Boom. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, nowadays, I mean, honestly, even nowadays I still get nervous, but obviously back then that was again, one of my first pranks. So of course I was nervous, but it's um, a good feeling. What, what I'm saying is like, people think like, they like they think like they think that like they can't be you because they're nervous you know or like they can't be not they can't be you but like they can't be like your level because someone at I your level is not nervous that's what i think i would be way more nervous working a nine to five job so that do i i look at yeah. it this way do i want to be nervous doing this or do i want to live a life that i don't want mm. like to get the result that i want i have to go do whatever the crazy shit of the day is there's no way around it that's Damn. the way I look at it. And you mentioned NPC earlier. So do you follow like Andrew Tate? Oh, that's Andrew Tate. That would be like my dream collab. So yeah, I'm a huge Andrew Tate fan. Yeah, because you mentioned NPC and Andrew Tate's always talking about NPCs. NPCs are the ones that are just walking around with... I've actually never heard him. I've heard like every Andrew Tate interview. I don't think I've heard him say the term NPC, has he? Yeah, he says NPCs. He calls them <laughs> NPCs just going through life with no dreams or goals and... Collecting a paycheck. The Matrix, yeah. Yeah, just stuck in the Matrix. Yeah, that's... You well, don't want to be you stuck said, You said Andrew Tate would be your dream collab? Yeah. I think you can make it happen. I really do. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about po- possibly doing an Andrew Tate character as well. Uh, no, yeah, I, highly, <laughs> I highly recommend it. No, like that... But the you- thing is, I respect him so highly that if I do it, I have to do it right. Like, I'm actually going to rent the fucking supercars. I'm mm. going to have a team of bodyguards following me around like he does. Like, I'm going to make it fucking legit. I'm going to make him look like a badass. So, like, you know what I mean? Because some people that I do characters on, I, I'm, i like, making fun of them. But this one would be more like a tribute, you know? Where, uh, where are you going to film that one at? In Cali or Texas? Uh, Cali. I have to do everything in Cali because... Um, well, as specifically in L.A. because the police in other places you like filming in Austin. People think Austin is like this liberal big city compared to LA. It's a fucking village cops. They're coming two seconds. They have nothing to do. Mm. There's no place like LA when it comes to filming pranks. And I don't know why I always say that because I don't want other people infiltrating it. And then maybe the cops will start taking it more seriously. If everybody came over here. Well, that's probably why all the big pranksters are in LA. Literally all the big pranksters. Do you see them living in Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, it's the place to be. And not only that, but the weather. That's a big thing, bro. In Texas, the weather isn't even that bad compared to other places. But when it's 100 degrees or it just starts raining randomly in the middle of the day, you can't really film that much. Then there's also like two malls in the whole Austin. Whereas in L.A., you'll never run out of spots. Like there's a million. If you get trespassed from like, 10 malls okay there's still 20 more you can go to you know what i mean so what's scarier like i know no, nothing's probably scary for you because i mean you're some big dude but like obviously you if I pull, someone pulls out a gun you're not gonna be like not scared what uh area would you say is more dangerous texas or cali that's texas is a very big range and cali is a very big range so like watts in cali was way scarier than austin for example okay but like the hood in austin is way scarier than say 
Beverly Hills. So yeah. it really depends on where you film. You got to be in the right area wherever you are. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. Okay. No, this is, I've been, this is a good conversation so far. Uh, how much time do you have? I want to get a um, good indication of how much time you have left. Um, well, I do have my Zoom call with my clients in about nine minutes, but if we go okay. a little over, bro. Yeah, yeah, well, we can ask, ask whatever you want to. Yeah, we can run uh, probably just for a few more minutes. Uh, the last thing that I kind of really want to get into is uh, I would say with the last four minutes that we have left, I would say mindset. You mentioned this earlier, the mindset that it really took you to get to that next level. As we uh, are wrapping up this podcast and, and uh, just it coming to an end, what mindset would you um not leave people with but like what's something that you can leave people with like a like a what's the best way to say this um like an action step like an action step type belief i probably butchered that but oh one thing i i guess like something I've they could really take away liked. something they could take away from this do do shit regardless of how you feel Okay. Always get shit done regardless of how you feel. I don't give a fuck how I feel. And it's that's why it's frustrating doing pranks a lot of times too because I do have to be in a good mindset um, with the pranks because I'm just not as funny if I'm uh, in a negative, um, you know, headspace. But pretty anything else, <laughs> like hitting the gym, editing, whatever it is, do – even with pranks, like we talked about, I get scared, I get nervous, just like everybody else. But I'm I'm still gonna do it because I I need I want the end result that I want, and the end result of just being an NPC scares me a lot more than going and approaching the person and doing something that people might find cringe. You know. So you have two options basically: you can stay the person you are now, or you can possibly go to the next level. Yep. It Thank really you. comes down to that. Love yeah, it, man. You're well, gonna appreciate, have... Yeah, I appreciate having you on the podcast. It was great. Um, hopefully in a year, you're at that 2 million or 5 million, 5 million mark subscribers. We can get you back on here on the podcast. 100%, bro. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, hopefully a year from now. I mean, um, like I talked about in my million subs video, people haven't even seen my full potential with the pranks because of the bullshit cameraman situation. But Tanner, the guy who, you know, is basically the one person who is on the same wavelength. How, how do you say it? Huh? Wavelength? I guess, like, like, we have the same exact vision when it comes to pranks. Yep. We're both fucking savages. I mean, he's facing two years in prison right now um, if he gets arrested again. And he, he's still fucking going just as hard as ever. So once he moves out here, we're going to be filming nonstop. We're gonna not going to have any more limitations dealing with this cameraman problem. So... Yeah, if you thought, if you liked my work before, it's about to go to a completely different level without all the limitations, the time limitations we're always dealing with. Yeah, so I'm I'm really about to take shit to another level. And um, yeah, hopefully a year from now, like you said, 2 million coaching business, hundreds yes, of that's clients, what I was gonna say. lives change. I was going to mention that. If you're ready to get jacked and you're ready to go to the next level in fitness, you need to be hitting Eric up and there's a, they can hit you up on Instagram, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Hit him up on Instagram and uh, let him, you know, let him know you came from this podcast. If that's yes. the case. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. 